Good morning, everybody. Hello. Oh, there's four of you watching. That's nice. Welcome along. Are you going to... Oh, is this true? You, uh, you know, I, I, when I posted this morning, I said, after a lot of deliberation, I've gone for this bluey-grey colour. And it did take me a lot of deliberation, because looking at the image... If you remember last week and, and the week before, we were talking about how I identify what, what the main colour in the picture is, is I sort of like relax my view a little bit and see. Whereas actually, there's more black. You know, the dark colour is dominant in this, isn't it? But if we'd have used black paper, it would have meant <laughs> to create the tree, we'd be drawing the shapes around the tree. So we'd be doing lots of little blue shapes and green shapes. And I thought, you know what? I'm not that mean. I am, but not today. Morning, morning, Marie. Morning, Kate. Um, I'm not that mean, no matter what people say. And then I thought, well, should it be more green than blue? And I'll tell you what made me decide. Let's get some bird song on. Um, what made me decide to go for the blue is the branches. Because I was thinking if I went for green, because that's quite a dominant area, that means I'd have to put a lot of blue pastel on the sky, which would mean when we had to do the black branches on top, we've already got lots of layers mm. of pastel already sandwiched on there and the branches weren't going to stand out. So I thought if we can reduce that, then we might be a bit better off. Morning, Roger. Um, so that's my thought process. I think it's important to understand the thought process behind it because when you're faced with a photograph yourself mm. you have to go through that thought process don't you and if you don't know how to determine what to do so it's a bit of a battle this morning it was either going to be black blue or green so I went with a bluish color because I thought it would be easier mm. there is a, a ruined churchy monastery thing behind it you don't have to put that in, but if we don't, it's a, it's a much shorter lesson. <laughs> um, it adds a bit of something, but what's interesting is there's hardly any shadow of that building compared to the tree. And it's because the light is directly behind the sun, um, a bit the, the, the behind the tree, so it's casting longer shadows where it's... Um, shorter it, it's higher up over the building um so it does it does make a difference where uh the light is I, I i think i might be able to show you um i could show you with a bit of a, a putty eraser just to talk about shadow right let me make this this could be a fence post or a building or whatever now obviously you're looking at it from downwards um if i get my light on my torch well, that's the camera. I feel like Tony Art with more fear. Hang on. <laughs> right, so the tree, the light from the tree is lower and behind it. So we've got a long shadow. Whereas for the building, the light is higher. So the shadow is shorter. Because the tree's taller, obviously. It's to do with the height more than anything. Right. Um, so the, the angle of the sun does depend a lot, which is why midday is the most boring time for photographs, because the light is right over, like that, yeah. really short shadow, whereas the lower the, sky, the lower the light, the longer and more interesting the shadows Ah, oh, makes a difference. I've got um a, a model of a house that I've got. I glued it to a book because I didn't have anything else uh, with some trees, and I use that sometimes oh, with a yeah up there yeah. with a torch mm. to show how really drastically things change just with a short angle of light difference, yeah. like shadows on a chimney, and and often it's stuff that you can't make up. It's very difficult to make up shadows if you don't know where the light's coming from. Um, you know, I've seen tutorials of people who will do it more in an engineer's kind of way and they'll do like angles of the paper and 
I'd rather just see a photograph or make a model with a light so I can see where it's going. Yes. Yeah. And it, I just now I can see now when it's going like that. Yeah. But what's re well, often you see in in art, it's easier to not put the sun in the picture. Yeah. Because if, hang on, let me just make a few little things out of my putty rubber so you can see. Because this is all important. It's all about learning, isn't it? And you're here to learn, surely. Surely, to goodness, you're here to learn. Right, I'm going to make a few little, few little versions of this. Um, I do have plasticine, but this is a put a really old putty rubber that's um, rather manky, but it still erases beautifully. Well, I've got I've got a gnome that where's I don't know where plasticine oh plasticine Barry's over there. There's plasticine Jackie. You can see Jackie, but I'm behind a plate. <laughs> Because if you put the sun in the picture, all of your items in it will have to have a shadow depending on where the sun is. So, for example, let's move those apart a little bit. We've got lots of lights in the classroom, so we will ignore that. Let's get my torch back on. So, obviously, if the sun is from the one side, all the shadows follow a similar pattern yeah if the sun is in the middle however can you see how all the shadows go in a different angle so the shadows are going that way and where the sun is central to an object it's a straight forward and the shadows go off in a different angle so that's why it's hard to make up where the, the sun is in a picture yeah. um, in most landscapes we avoid putting shadows in because of this issue because you say which way without the sun being in the picture which way is the light yeah you, you can sometimes judge things on here yeah you, you you know you can look at the side of a tree or something to know where the light yeah. side is coming from so what i try to do when i um have a, a sun in the photograph um is i try to almost use it as a pinpoint um dot and then draw lines almost like perspective lines from that light source so i can see where all of the lines will come from and and here in the picture that sun is the white bit behind the tree yes. so we know that the light is directly behind that tree which yes. is why the tree's shadows are coming towards us and why the front of the building is so dark yes Yes, because the light is behind, yeah. so it's all in silhouette. But if it was over there, the sides of the, um, what do you call them, ferrules yeah. or whatever, would, you'd be able to see the... You would, you'd see, you'd, yeah. see the, you'd see the light side on each part of the crenellation on the right side, for example, but then the shadow of the tree would be going towards the left, yeah. and the shadows of the windows of the building yeah. would be going more yeah. towards the left the zigzag top yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so it does it makes a massive difference um, the light is a huge part of your picture that's okay you've, you've learned a new word um, yeah it, light makes a massive difference to your picture it can make or break it so it's really important not to just make it up it does. it does but yeah. what's also interesting is i i'll i hear a lot of people talk about shadows in the water instead of reflections because the reflection and a shadow are two totally different things you can have a shadow of an object and the reflection of an object and they're not the same so a reflection will always be a mirror image so like on a lake. yeah mm. i can i can show you I have got a system. Oh, there's my face. Ooh. You're 
Right. You didn't rest and put to me reflections. Yes. Ideas, yes. About reflections so if that's if that's our tree or what have you, you can see it's got. Let's lean that over a little bit more like that, so you can see it's got a reflection. Yeah. But also, can you see that shadow where I'm moving the light in the water? The reflection stays a mirror image, but the shadow, which you'll see on my finger, oh, right, yeah. the Maybe. shadow moves with the light, but the reflection, the reflection doesn't. doesn't. Oh, so, shadows and reflections are totally different. You can have a reflection and a shadow, or no shadow, but you'll always have reflection. Reflections are uh, a whole other thing um, to discuss one day because that fire. Oh, there we go. Because that a reflection will depend on your height, how tall you are. Will depend on what you can see reflected, which is quite fun. But that's for a day when we talk about water. No, well, if you've got a pastel pencil, don't be worried about your twiggy bits because that's what pastel pencils are useful for. I've sharpened yours. You know, you really do get the... You look after it. I try so hard. You look after it. That's why you sandpaper. Sandpaper at home. Yes. So I've got here a dark blue and a black pastel pencil. I thought I'd sketch out with the dark blue. And then we'd use the black for the tree branches. And then we can talk about colour. Morning, Anne. Northern's here in body. In body, not in mind. I think I think most of us are like that this morning. I'm, I'm very tired today. Because I was watching a film about Robert the Bruce last night. It was very good. I bet there was some crenellations in that. There, was, there were pren plenty of crenellations. You're just going to drop it in? I'm feeling so crenellated this morning now. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a look at how we can work this out. Let me see where... Because I'm going to run out of fingers to work this out, but I'm going to do it this morning. I reckon about four, five, six, seven fingers up is the bottom of the grass. So if I do that very lightly, so that's that's the line, the land line, if you like, where the building base is. I'm doing it quite light, um, so we can sketch it out, and then we can do all. So it's quite purpley that brick, isn't it? I don't know where this is, by the way. But I just thought it'd be interesting to do. Oh, about a thumb width. A generous thumb width up on, uh, on the right hand side is that lower wall which runs for about four fingers and then you can put your crenellations on top that little bit there that four fingers across and two fingers up And you can add your crenellations on top. You can go crazy with your crenellations if you want. There's no, no, they are crenellations. That's what they are. So we'll do little evenly spaced battlements. Lovely, isn't it? Nice 
nice little shoehorn in there, V. Yes. Well, w interestingly, <laughs> when I um, where I got married is like a it was it's called a castle, but it wasn't a, like a big manor house, and that had a license to crenellate, so it had crenellations along the top, but it wasn't really a castle. So there you go. Are you of noble birth, then, Harry? Um. Um. No, I am. I, I've I've traced um on my father's mother's side. Uh, 500 years ago, they were the baronets of the Mostyns of Flintshire that owned Flintshire, North Wales. Blimey. So I am of nobility. I texted my auntie after I found that out. I said, hang on, why am I not a baron? And where is the money? <laughs> because I was brought up in a council house. We ain't got no money. It was beans on toast and a tin of stew in steak with me. Um, and then there's like these massive mansions, but it was we're from we descended from the females line when they never got anything did they it was always the firstborn male that got everything yeah. right about three fingers higher than that bit is the turret so we've been very light here and that's gonna i'm gonna do that the width of my finger although it's a little bit wider further down but i'm not i'm not that fussy Make it a bit wider if you want. This isn't Dudley Castle, that's for sure. Although Dudley Castle is nice. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a bit weird, but it's behind a tree, so we can hide it all. About three fingers up from the baseline, I'm going to draw the top of that building very badly, quite wonky. Hello, Hello. Hello Jackie. We had a nice lesson about shadows this morning. Is that three fingers up the next? Three fingers, yes. Some crenellations yeah. and shadows. I didn't know what a crenellation was. But now she does, she's going to use it all the all time. The time. <laughs> I like crenellations. <laughs> <laughs> I've got crenellations on my glasses. <laughs> you could make some out of clay. <laughs> huh? No, we haven't got anything crenellate. I suppose. Um, Broughton Castle's the only thing with crenellations. Yeah. We ain't got anything now, have we? Well, some of the churches. Oh, sometimes oh, they yeah. do, but I don't think St Mary's has, has it? Have, don't know. St Mary's hasn't. No. no. Might do, because sometimes around the, the top of the... the Bodicote. Bodicote. Yes. Bodicote. 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 <laughs> yeah, I don't know, because sometimes around the top of the fire before they put the spire on yeah. it's crenellated mm -hmm. isn't it that's mm -hmm. true nice. right about two fingers in from the right is where the doors that no the to, to, to the left thank you the other right um, <laughs> and that's about my little finger width with an arch it has got a little thin strip along the top there doesn't it but, but, and then the crenellation sit on top of that we're going to get our money's worth out of that word today. Yeah. And I'm not counting them exactly. Does that go up a little further away again? Yeah. Yeah, there's, it's almost, there's a slight little line at the bottom. Then actually, it's it's almost two fingers across the, from that where you've got that little archway. Bushes, bushes. Yeah. 
because I did toy with the idea of not having not not doing the building this morning, but I like the light being thrown through the windows and door. You know, it's um, yeah. Otherwise, it'd be a bit boring just shoving a tree on some blue. I'm not that. I'm not that sort. I don't like you to be bored in the lesson. Not always. It's a portrait next week. Portrait slash figure, and we're going to use charcoal next week. So we'll use just cartridge paper. You might like it. Jackie won't be sitting in next week because she hates the sound of charcoal massively. So it's um. There's the lip. Yeah, you got your thing, and then we've got two windows, haven't we? There's about a pencil width across. There's another little window. None of these windows make sense, I suppose, because we haven't got the floors left. Yeah. Naughty Henry. Now I've got I've got these all slightly wrong. Yeah, I'm going to move it a little bit. I'm just cuz I've got I've got more space here than I should have. I don't know what I've done. So is that arch next to the Oh no, is that window next to the arch on the right? Yes. It's it's not level with the bottom of the top of the arch. No, it's just a little a little thing and then the other one is it is so weird how it fits so you could just make it up <laughs> honestly i think because uh, i'm in like quite a few education forums with with other like more serious art teachers and stuff i i think they'd hate the way i work because they're confined by the government's restrictions mm -hmm you know in mainstream education whereas i really am not mm -hmm. i think a lot of what you learn is way above well, degree level right? i think so i you think know my son got four points in three in three yes he's continuing that now so good yeah. good i'm glad about yeah. that because yeah. she passed her counseling exams and yeah. so haven't she yeah, yeah. yeah. no it's yeah. lovely Oh, that's oh, nice. Well, tell her I've asked about her because I haven't yeah. seen her for a while. Well, I'm friends with her mum. And yes. Yeah. Now, she used to come to class. And then th there was one time she tried having a, a, a guide dog. Yeah. And, and he was so naughty. Oh, yeah. It was a lovely little thing. But she sat in the corner and the dog was on my lap sometimes while I was trying to <laughs> teach. He was everywhere because he'd got a bit of freedom. I know. It didn't work. It out. didn't work. And it doesn't always. There's a There's a... A lady with uh, vision impairment that comes into the cafe downstairs, and she's got a dog called Woody, and he brings her to the cafe because he knows he gets biscuit I treats. Uh, they're amazing. It's amazing. Do you know? No. I don't know, but my granddaughter's dog, you know, Josie Jones, and she's completely round of town, so you know. Is it going to oblige them? No, but oh. she's got a sandwich metro. She's yeah. Cock of corn. Yeah. And Yeah, you'd end up turning up to that place. Yeah, and this is what Woody does. He takes his owner to the cafe because he knows Kath gives him some dog biscuits every time he comes in. Like so. A little pretty sandwich on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Rosie goes. She'd like to take me to the shop. Yes. And bed in church. Lane. Yes. Funny, isn't it? Mm. I, I saw a video of this little dog that escaped from the it was in a, a a sort of shelter a dog shelter it escaped four times to go to the same pet shop to steal the same toy oh, wow. and then try and bring it back in the end they ended up buying him that toy because he, it was it, it, every time it went it, it was um it was like it yeah. definitely needed that toy in its life. Yeah. Um. I love I love dogs because well yeah. I like all animals but I've I I and just I love little dogs. Really. Yeah. 
You see, two two or three years ago, I, we had that problem with that big Ridgeback dog. Remember, did you, I don't know if I told you about it. I came into work one morning. It must have been like summer and um, Rhodesian Ridgeback, you know, the massive oh, yeah. lion wrestling dogs. And I was up here and I heard big barks, lots of little dark barks and screaming and yelping and all of this. So I looked up the window and I'd seen that this massive dog had attacked a tiny little dog that was being walked. The dog, the little dog was okay. It was just a bit yelpy. But I thought, then I was watching this massive dog be really aggressive to everybody around. And I thought, we can't have that because that, that will like, he could attack anybody at any minute. Kathy was away on holiday. <laughs> I don't know what made me think of doing it. I, I was stupid. I went outside and I called the dog over with some salami out of the fridge. Yeah. Um, and it was really. I thought its hackles were up, but I because I didn't know it was. It's, yeah, because I, I didn't know it was a ridgeback at first. But it was really angry and it was really scared. So that's why it was angry. Mm. And I thought if I can just keep him outside here, if he could come in, that would be even better. But if I can keep him here until somebody comes because I know they were ringing the police or whatever. So I sat on the doorstep outside with a packet of chorizo, um, and I was just throwing him a chorizo to keep him there. And then three hours <gasps> I had to keep him because the police came. The dog walking. No, they hadn't got anything. And the police came and they said, we haven't got anything. We, we're waiting for something. We've got no way of containing him. We well, can't find the nice. owners or anything. Yeah. Um, so I was lying on the floor because I thought the lower I get, the less of a threat I appear to the dog. So I lay on the floor mm. outside the cafe, throwing him salami. I was trying to get him closer. Then a policeman walked up with a, a tiny little lead. I mean, this dog's head was yeah. massive. And he come with this tiny little lead. He said, do you think you could get this on him? I said, no, I I'll have a try. So I tried holding the lead open and, oh. and feeding him through it. And he was eating out of my hand towards the end. Um, Leslie from the set that the, the crystals was like, oh my god, what's going on? Um, I said, can I have you? Have you got a spare sandwich? Because I've run out of food. Because um, I went through everything that I could feed him um, on the floor, and then the owners turned up three hours later, and he was as happy as Larry to see them because he was just scared. He'd escaped, um, and I hadn't realised. I looked up, and the police had cornered off the top of Parson Street with, <laughs> and they'd stopped all the crowds. And then down by um, the old auctioneer archway, yeah, yeah. they'd stopped all the crowds. And there was just lines of police and me on the floor throwing chorizo to this really vicious dog. It was hilarious. Um, but I, I, he was really happy. I did say I wouldn't keep him in the car for too long with the amount of chorizo I fed him. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the owner. No. But it's the, it's the only thing I could think of. I thought, I need to feed this dog. Um, and keep him so he doesn't bite everybody else. Um, if I'd have known he was a Ridgeback and he wasn't angry all the time, I'd have just got closer to him much quicker and kept him in the shop because my, my art shop's got a gate. So I could have just put some food and water down and locked him up until somebody came. But, you know, you know when you do stupid things and you think, yeah. that's a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> so my tree is going to be here. So I've got a nice gap for it. Me or the dog? <laughs> the dog had the freedom of Bambury. Yeah, I'm doing a bit of tree here, but I'm not going to go any higher because I'm going to wing the rest of it. But I will bring the tree bottom a bit lower down so we can see it's in front. So we've got the building there and then the tree roots about there. See, that's not been too scary, has it? No. no. Next out. week's a scary one. Yeah. It's a figure. It's a portrait and like the upper half of a body and we're going to just use charcoal. Maybe charcoal pencils or charcoal sticks on cartridge paper. I think I think you'll enjoy it. It's a good challenge. So we'll look at proportions and proportions and stuff. Right, so we need a bit of sky, a bit of sun. I need to clean off my white because it's filth. And then I'm going to go quite strong. What, with the stick one or the little one? 
the little one because the the long one's harder so I'm going to do a circle the size of a penny quite heavy and then try and clean my finger off again and I'm going to just go around so wherever you've drawn your tree <laughs> a new penny. I wouldn't know what an old penny was, Kath. <laughs> I was born after decimalisation, I'm afraid. <laughs> I do. I've got a drawful downstairs. Um, down the, the side of the, the shop till, I've got an old wooden, old-fashioned wooden till. And at the back of that, I've got all money from the 1930s and 40s, from when we had our 1940s party, street party. So I do know what one's like, really. Also, my dad would only ever talk in um, imperial measurements and old money. And every every time you said anything, he'd have to turn it to an equation of of what it would have been yeah. 50 years ago. Oh, I only I only cook in ounces. I've got I've got the old fashioned scales with the weights. <laughs> And I use that, and I've got one that I use, um, and I measure in cups, mm -hmm. cups, ounces, yeah. You haven't, I haven't given, I forgot that last week, didn't I, Kat? I'm failing. The original paper stump. I use blenders for drawing less for pastels. I actually find the ones for the, the paper stumps, I find them a bit too hard for pastels. They're good if I'm going to put a lot in place, but I I think... Um, yeah. Oh, the... Yeah, what are the they called? On, yeah. Oh, colour shapers. Yeah, yes. Yeah. They're all right. I don't really use them. But then I've not really done a huge amount with pastels for the last few years, only when I do the odd class. So we want a bit of a glow. I don't know if I want to do much with that sky. We might as well keep the blue the colour of the sky, aren't we, do you think? Yeah. Because if we haven't had loads of pastel, we're going to go through the same issue that we would have had yeah. um, previously. So I want it, and, and thankfully I must have got it right because my camera is... Oh, I've, I've, I thought I'd use a bit of posh pastel for the middle. And it's already broken and I've only got a tiny little bit of it. Just so you can see it's a little bit brighter in the centre. It isn't. Because I ain't posh. Because the more... The more you put on there, the harder it's going to be to put the tree branches and stuff, isn't it? So, you could now, Roger. I know. Um, we did a, a thing last week, and I know Roger, you were you were impressed with with this. We um, for subtle areas of light, we just rub the pastel on our finger. Oh, I'm I'm impressed, Kath. So it just gives us more subtle tones because when you put the pastel straight down, it it makes a really hard area, doesn't it? So I just want to tint, tint it a little bit. Gosh, it's half past ten already. You've been here half an hour. Scrape it with your fingernail a little bit just to, but you it's only for subtle. It's not for fancy. I had my haggis on Monday. I know it wasn't Burns night, but it's the only time. Monday I have an afternoon in between classes, so I cook me a proper dinner on a Monday. So I had haggis, neeps and tatties, and it was Swede, obviously, because yeah, it's yeah. Swede is turnips up there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we, try, we were trying to work out where the divide is, because in the black country it's Swede. But up um, like Northumberland area, it's 
turnips. Yes. It is. But but they're interchangeable in certain counties of the UK. So to me No. So to me a turnip is smaller white with a bit of purple and a swede is orange, bigger, really hard to cut and a bit of purple. But in Scotland, Northumberland and other counties, a swede is the white one with a bit of purple and a turnip is the yellow one with a bit of purple. I don't know at what point in the the world we decided to have exactly the same vegetable but with opposite names. It makes no sense to me. In Germany you can't really buy turnip bread and turnip. You can buy what we would call kohlrabi and that's okay. what they would use. Oh interesting. Which is posh to us and it's kohlrabi. I've never heard of it. Kohlrabi you see could be my creme laisse word. For you got to use that today now. Do you cook it? You do, yeah, you cook it like a turnip. It's got like the... So it's like, a root vegetable. It's a root vegetable and it's got like greens and stuff in it that you just cook yeah. and then just put it in. <laughs> so yeah. every day is a school day. Yeah, so, Northern, your Yorkshire, what is a Swede to you? Is a Swede the orange one or the white one? Because I'm trying to find out where where it breaks in the country, where it becomes the opposite. It's in, I find it fascinating. I do. I love language. Yeah, I know, I, I've forgotten what we were looking up the etymology of yesterday. We, there was a, a phrase or a word that we said. I don't know. But my Google search was appalling because I ended up having to look up long-tailed tits. And um, I hadn't got safe search on. So you could imagine half the images that were coming up on my phone... <laughs> Dear oh. <laughs> right, I, I'm trying to find a colour on here. There's 64 colours in this, and I think I said to you before, no matter how many colours you have in a pastel set, you've yeah. never got the right colour. I'm did trying to... You, yeah. Sorry. Did you leave a bit of white in that window next to the tray? Yeah. Do you know what? I think we ought to break out the white pastel pencil as well, don't you think? That'll give us a bit more control. Or... Thank you to you, madam. And to you. Thank you. Because you're right that... So yeah, the window behind the tree, that's white. And that one, the little one is the little as well, isn't it? <coughs> nice bit of observation there, V. Because it's a hazy circle, isn't it? It, yeah. wouldn't, it wouldn't be perfect anyway. Um, yeah. It's. Um, I think this is going to be a really interesting. Yeah, this is it. But what is interesting with watercolour challenge, I'm just using a bit of white on the top of my crenellations, V. Um... <laughs> What you notice with the watercolour challenge, and uh, one of the episodes last week, they were they were saying about this how different it is to work from real life than a photograph, because you know you've got your photograph in front of yeah. you, and it's all confined. You know your it's edges, not change, is 
No, um, and over three, I think they have three hours, don't they? Yeah. Well, the light changes within 30 minutes. So what's really important, if we if we were sitting in front of this in real life, we'd only have half an hour to sketch this out because the shadows would be totally different. Yeah. yeah. You know, every half an hour that passed over a three-hour period, you're going to get the shadows shifting hugely mm -hmm. towards the end. And I, the one I saw, um, I think they were in Devon um, last week. Was it the Great Island? No, they did one. There was a, f a big fancy manor house oh, right, that was yeah. like an art retreat. And they, they were saying, like, when they started it, it was quite bright, vibrant grass, yes. but the sky was dull. Yeah. But then towards the end, the sky was bright blue, so they wanted to put some of that in. And one guy decided to turn his painting upside down so the sky wouldn't run into it. Fireman, yeah. yeah. Which makes a lot of sense, really. I might do a little bit of white just in the top of that window as well. Just, just sketch it slightly with my finger and just so it feels a bit brighter because when you're talking about lights and darks it's all about contrast um so the to make your lights lighter you need to make your darks darker and and so on i've got a bit of green pastel pencil that i'm going to use to create an extra bit of oh i can hear julie from next door a hint of tree or something through through the arched window <laughs> might use a bit of white on it just to lighten it I don't want much because the floor is quite high up because you can see the floor through through the window can't you yes. so this isn't floor this is tree and I've still got that um, what a wonderful world in my head that you were singing earlier, V. One of the drawing classes last week, we'd got the whole school from Les Mis going on. Because oh, yeah. when uh, me and Liz Riley go off on one, we can turn anything into a song. <laughs> right, so we've got a little bit of light coming through. Okay, that's good. Right, now on this massive tray of colours can I find a colour that's you see there's a dark purple oh I might use that mm. the, darkest one. the darkest purple <laughs> and I'm going to do all my castle in it oh, wow. I might I won't smudge it because I might skim a little bit of black over the top of it just to darken it a fraction. The aim is that if we can get this background bit done um, in the first half, then we can work really dark purple. That's it. And I'm just going to do it. Well, I'm going to leave where the tree is. <coughs> Again, the reason why I'm leaving that is so I don't have to have so many layers. I haven't decided what I want to do for the shadow yet. Because normally I do shadows that are purple. But the shadow in here isn't purple, is it? It's, it's very blue. I think the trickiest bit when you're working with pastels is the details, how to get an edge. Because yeah. yeah. really, I'm going to have to use this to do the uh, the really fine mullion bits in the window, the big window. We were talking about education and and how people learn and how things are new for certain people at you know at different times because uh, I, I saw something on social media and there was a, a young person um who'd only just learned how their hair grows young as in like a young adult mm -hmm. 
and people were really taking the mickey out of her and i think that's cool because i i, I said you know we all know something that somebody else doesn't mm -hmm. and it's a bit unfair to presume superiority over over that because she thought her hair grew from the ends you know like tree roots and grass yes. Yes, yes. she she didn't realize it grew from the head she thought it grew it just added on so the hair that you got on the top is kind of what you're born with and then it just gets longer by adding on and then when yes. she found yes. out it it make it kind of makes sense because that's what happens yes. in nature you know yes. with a tree you've got your trunk yes. and then the branches grow on top of that and then your branches on top of that so um it doesn't grow from the body of the tree and and then she got really like panicky and she said but does that mean then i've got hair inside my head that comes out you know like um yeah. spaghetti in a way i suppose and and people were being really horrible and i and i thought there's really no need for that because she's inquiring because it's the first time she's learned about it and and they're natural questions that you would have the first time you learn about it so don't take superiority over it because I'm sure she might know something that you don't. And if she's excited to learn, that's the main thing. She was quite young, I think probably like late teens, early 20s. Um, Can I just ask, the way you use the purple, yeah. are you using it as darkened shades? Because some bits are darker than others. No, I'm, I've, I've just skimmed over it, um, over everything. And then I'm going to put a little bit of black or dark grey. Oh, there's a dark grey I'll skim over without, um, before I blend. So it's not purple, purple. I have I have pressed down quite hard and I've just gone over the side of my building which is a little bit annoying I got a bit too carried away dark a dark grey I've, I've chosen dark grey instead of black but either will work and then if I go in with a a cotton but as long as it dulls the purple down you'll be all right because I'm going to go round it in a in a black pastel pencil, maybe just to or blue. I've chickened out, and I'm going to do the shape of the arched window, the mullion bit, you know, the the centre part, using a black pastel pencil. So I'll redefine a lot of my lines with with black. So I want to fill it all in. Are you using the cotton? Yeah. I've got a lot of excess pastel here. So I have to blow that off. that over to the bin if you do ever get areas where like can, can you see on my castle here look on my turret I've slipped with my pastel yeah. I can use a putty rubber just to lift it off and neaten my edge again okay. um, so that's quite useful. So I'll go back in now with a black pastel pencil um, or any dark colour that you've got just to recreate. Which dark grey did you use though? The one it's almost, bl it looks almost here. black. Yeah, that's black. And you've just skimmed all over the, the castle and then smudged it together to make it a darker, a darker scene. And then I'm going over it with a black pastel pencil to reaffirm my lines. I 
I mean, we had 10 minutes discussing about shadows, but I do think that's a really important thing to, to talk about. Something like that, maybe. I don't know. That's all right. I'm I'm going to keep fiddling to try and make this look a bit more, a bit better. Let's move all my pencils out of the way. I've just coloured my sky in now with a pencil. That's a stupid thing to do. I smudged it. It is tricky once you start building up the layers, isn't it? Mm. There are buttresses and all sorts in this, but I don't know how much information I want to put in. Depends how solid you want to make make it look or how much you can actually put in physically because the, the more pastels you've used to get the tone, you're going to have a, the issue that we were talking about initially that is a little bit troublesome for the, for the pastel pencil to work on. are some lighter bits in which you could use as a pastel pencil maybe as well. I know there are some of you that can't join these classes live and you're doing them virtually. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm glad to get the feedback that you're enjoying the pastel classes because for us it's a it's a new thing. Um, you know, we've, we used to do the odd pastel, didn't we, V? Yeah. But um, there is, just tip it in. You get a lot of pastel, don't you, just yeah. lurking around. So I don't, I, again, it's something I could just keep fiddling with and I really don't want to do too much. I'm just playing around now and I shouldn't. It's knowing when to stop, isn't it? So I think 
I'll stop that bit. gonna just pop that in behind the window and then I'll pass it on to oh, I'll break it and then I'll pass it on to you there we go so I've got a bit of green grass behind now look okay. which works quite well it's nearly time for a cup of tea mm. <coughs> so what I almost had a, a, a vision and it crossed my mind that oh, we'll, in a painting class, you see, what I would do is very quickly block in the green. Yeah. But in a pastels class, if we did that, we'll be leaning on the green to do the tree, wouldn't we? Yeah. So we'll have to do that in reverse. So just two little bits there. That's just two little bits of grass through the door and at the bottom of the window. Just gives you a bit more control than trying to use a big pastel stick. We may reuse that with um, the shadows afterwards. So that means we've got an hour left. Which I think when you consider we've got just the tree the grass and the shadow to do i think that's doable in an hour don't you reckon yeah, yeah. yeah i'll crack the whip Yeah, I, I, I've tried to give it a little bit of stability and make it look like a structure rather than just a big blodge of brown and purple plastic, you know, pastel yeah. pencil. <coughs> I mean, there are tons of branches on this tree. I mean, you've you've really got the option to cover the whole picture up with pastel if you want. And I'm not going to insist you um, follow a specific pattern. Just do as you see fit with your branches. And I'm going to... Yeah. Because the trunk you can fill in, can't you, afterwards with um, with the black pastel once I've gone round the edges. But it's all those faffy little branches. So I'll do a little bit, then I'll quickly go. Kath, what do you drink? Is it coffee or tea? Um, I think I'd like you need the coffee today yeah what like a white americano or a latte a or a latte, a latte. Thank you. and v you'll have tea won't you yeah oh that's a bit squeaky but i'm still brushing out with the pencil it will be annoying so i apologize about the squeak can't really do anything about yeah she's we've had a delivery arrive actually so it's it's thankful that that's come at the right time i'll have to try and do that for next thursday for her otherwise she'll be wincing so by 
stroking away from the tree, you'll always get thinner tapered branches towards the edge but you will find you'll you'll start with a bit and then you'll end up having to add a slightly thicker bit because the branch needs to have some sturdiness on it so it doesn't collapse or snap and it's one that you can go to town with so you could do some in the lesson and then finish it off after and just keep adding more branches I do think with trees we, we tend to not put enough branches on ever and yet there's loads isn't there when you look at them they are what is it more these type of trees more difficult there's a I lot of it. Naturally. Yeah. If it was a tree struck by lightning and not a crisis. Yes. There's just, just a lot of branches, isn't it? And and what's interesting with this is it does create a shape. However, as I'm doing something like this, I will go like here, can you see my branches are all perfectly aligned? So what I'll do is go, oh right, okay, let's let's shove something out a bit higher. It doesn't have to look like that tree. Any tree will do. And can you see how it's making that sun look more vibrant on the screen? Yeah. Even though I'm I am actually colouring it in over the top. I once did a full day class on trees, different different trees, trees through the seasons, but we also did them, like we did drawing, acrylics, watercolour and gouache, so we did four different mediums um, for the whole day. And that class was so popular, it was full, I had to run it again a month later and then run it again a month later, I, I never realised how many people struggle with trees and I think it's because I've spent my whole life painting and drawing them so to me it's a a natural thing do you get a bit of a block when it comes to trees do you, do you think it's a fear that hits you straight away yeah random and human is not natural Because we think we're being random and then we do it all and then when we look back we go, oh actually they're all exactly the same. I'm the same with rocks. If I'm drawing lots of yeah, rocks, they all the same shape. Yeah. Clouds, exactly the same shape. So the more random I become, the less random it actually is. <laughs> so I do have to stop and go, right, I'm definitely going to make a change here and um, create... A really wonky line or a curvy line where it shouldn't be well I'll quickly go and order the drinky booze and then I'll be back Yeah, I, I think I'm getting a bit of a 
but it was said it was it was a new thing. It's like a bit of lane, you know. So I said, well, see, it's a bit strange to say something like that. It wasn't it? It was about it. No, it wasn't it. one-handed and not doing Mrs. Overall or a two soups. <laughs> one or a soup. And another soup. Brilliant, isn't she? Gives you your madam. Thanks for doing that. Wants to bring a nice hazelnutty wafer in. Oh, yes, please. I don't Thank need you. it. I've got dinner. Thank you, Dad. And a latte for you. Thank you, Barry. Perfectly nice. Oh, it's a good treat, that. But it is, though, isn't it? It, it is. It all looks a bit. Like Medusa's hair, that tree. Mm. I've got to do some more fiddly bits, but my. Let me sharpen this. Does anybody want their black pencil sharpening? Yeah, the desk one. It does seem to work all right. It does. Now, I, I did have one issue where the pastel broke off inside. Ah, that's what I'm slightly. But thinking. what I did was I got like a, a 9H pencil or a yeah, really hard yeah. one, rammed it in and sharpened it because I knew that pencil was harder than the pastel mm. inside it and it dislodged it. But so far, I've sharpened every week the pastel pencils we've been using on there, but I just go really slowly mm. and I check that it doesn't break because you can't get inside the mechanisms of that tree, of, of that trick, of that pastel <laughs> sharpener. I need to do some wiggly lines. Because there's like curly branches, isn't there? So I just go, Wooah. I make it curly. Hmm. How are yours looking online? If you're doing it with us. So it's going to still look a little bit odd because the sky and the land are the same colour for now. So once we start adding a bit of green on. I think we'll add the green on all over and then we'll put the shadow on top of the green. I think that's going to be the safest option, isn't it? Because otherwise we're going to be painting in bits and I think that wouldn't... It would not be conducive. It's a tree. It is. It's a nice tree, isn't it? I I love it with trees like this because you can tell when a student gets fed up of doing all the branches because there's like a lot of detail and there's like a big chunk of tree where there's hardly any branches on where they've gone right. I'm not doing any more. I'm bored of it. But generally, the more you can add, the better it will look. I try to get these online as soon as the classes finish, or at least um, if I can't manage in between classes, um, as soon as my afternoon class finishes, because I'm teaching two classes a day. I'm only at work eight hours a day, and I'm teaching for five of them um, nearly every day. But I try and upload them really quickly to the uh, to our sister site. No, I only have Jackie. Yeah, yeah Sandra. That's it. Yeah, so no, Sandra left sadly after the first lockdown. And I can't really afford to replace them. Because yeah. some afternoons um, we don't get anybody in at all. And, and Jackie does the online 
sales and everything you know what i mean so yeah. like jackie does a lot more of the admin and the social media and all of that kind of stuff so even in a morning if there isn't a customer when jackie's working like she's doing a delivery today or she might be um if we get several online orders she's parceling those up and what have you but there is just me but we have a, a, a lovely mother and daughter every week they choose one from our backlog of lessons to do together on a on a mid oh, you know on a Thursday or Friday so they they're doing a different class today thank you Anne you know the tree looks good well you might as well ease yourself into the day aren't you don't want to do too much don't want to peak too soon do you I do like pastel pencils in that, you know, if we were trying to paint this in watercolours, it would be really fiddly um, to try and get, you've got to get the fluidity of paint, haven't you? And then you've got to get the darkness of colour and oh, it starts to get a little bit. Yeah, there's a few starting to like gouache now. Is it because you can cover your bits up and... It is watercolour is the hardest one and it's because you have to think backwards you have to put your lightest colour down and gradually get um, darker and darker a bit like with drawing in a way um, so pencil and watercolour are similar techniques that you start lighter gradually get darker yeah. but the added issue with watercolour is that it dries lighter than the colour you put it on so you could do a lovely soft pastel sky, nip to the loo, come back and you've got a white sheet of paper again. But I suppose whatever medium you're not familiar with is always going to be more difficult than the one that you are familiar with. So if you start off in watercolours, people find acrylics difficult because it's thicker and more vibrant. Whereas if you start off in acrylics, you'll find watercolours trickier. Yeah, which you can do. Yeah, you can. I, I like um, using them with hardly any water. Yeah, I have it just with a damp brush. Yeah, brilliant. Um, awesome. um, with a knife. Yeah, bit of a knife. Yeah, you love a bit of Do you? What, what about your painting? <laughs> <laughs> what acrylic stuff or mm. any well that one you showed me the other day looked really nice that Thank you did oh nice do one for it oh that's yeah. nice they do lots of Tree of Life stuff down in the cellar, downstairs in the crystals. I'm very interested in them. I know you are, Barry. Yeah. Celtic, um, imagery. imagery and, uh, yes, Triskelion. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I love all of that. The ancient, magical, mysterious stuff. I love it. I only just got back into it, really. It was something I liked in my youth and um, kind of stopped and then really got back into it when I fell, yeah, when I fell back in love with my gnomes and my fly agaric toadstools. You see, I do like crystals. I'm never so sure whether they'll, they're powerful or whatever, but I like looking at them and I like feeling them. 
things. So I do have quite a few crystals at home. It's spiritual, isn't it? Yeah, it's spiritual. Yeah, well, you know, we're made of all these elements, yeah. aren't we, you know? Well, I've got the silver tea foil from Steve. Oh, nice. I've got a an Aidan Kilgrave wife from the mountains. Nice. And I've got the tree of life. I see, I have, Jackie got me three crystals that help with anxiety, so I've always oh, got them in my pocket. Yeah, um, so I do, I have, lo I do have lots of crystals and um, all that kind of stuff. And I try to live in harmony with the seasons and the moon cycles and all of that, rather than the calendar, because you know that's a contrived thing, isn't I it? Have Whereas, to say, though, if you want a night walk, you at least call it about a full, full moon. moon. Oh, well, I worked in schools, and a full moon makes a massive difference to kids and windy weather. Yeah. The wind really saying it makes the children wild. Yeah, there's always wild children. If if it was windy and wet weather and a full moon the night before, it, it would be a, a nightmare for teaching. Well, I've just noticed there's branches across that window and I hadn't put any in. So I'm... Oh, that noise. So I'm just adding a few extra bits. But it's coming up to half past eleven. It's crazy, isn't it? How how absorbing a tree can be. Right, let me stop for a minute. And then I'm going to go with the nice bright green and cover my bottom. And then I'm going to go and cover the paper. Let's see if we can match it. Oh, that's the other thing we were looking up um, yesterday because we were doing a vignette of the bird and somebody asked what what a vignette was or where it came from. And we found out that, like, in photography and art, a vignette is when it fades out around the edges. Oh, right. But it traditionally comes from the French word for vines. Vineyard, like... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because they used to put vine leaf borders around things. Um but then in photography and art, you did a faded, either a dark or a lighter edge around it. Yeah. So that's where the term vignette comes from. It's actually French. So it does mean, because it's funny, I jokingly said, oh, it's a bit like vintner and all of that, you know, the ancient words for wine. Yeah. But I didn't, it didn't click that it would be because of the leafy borders. Right, I'm going to smudge my finger with this because I really want to push this into the paper. So if I push it into the paper, then we can really go to town with the shading of it all. But I've, I'm finding now we've got such a really broad spectrum of classes each week. I'm really loving it. I mean, not that I hate you in my job anyway, no, but, but it makes it more variable for me yeah. Yeah. where it's like, oh, no, it's watercolours again, or, oh, no, it's this painting again. Um, you know, I, I might be painting three to five watercolours a week, but they're all different pictures. Yeah. I couldn't, I could never teach the same one because uh, I know some art tutors for, for grown-ups will have three or four classes in a week but they're all the same subject and the same medium now for me I wouldn't feel well I, I just wouldn't feel enthusiastic after the no. second time and then I think if I'm bored it's going to come across as me yeah. being bored yeah. and I never want to be bored in my job I mean I still get excited about mixing green for goodness sake It is, but I just, I just, 
love art. I really do. I know, I know. I should hide me brush. No, me stick. What's this? Pastel pencil. Keep adding more. I'm being a just adder. Right, I need to put my tree roots back in. This is almost a tree of life shape tree, isn't it? I guess. Hello. Hello. You finished that order? Yes. You did very well. Well, you are being paid for it, dear. Yes, dear. Well, I am, but you've no idea. <laughs> we, uh, we, if, I, if I don't know what we're doing. You can't, I can't really, but I've just shoved, I've just shoved some in for a laugh. Come in there and sit down in the corner out the way for a minute. Yeah, I, well, it might be a bit squeaky. We've had some very squeaky pastel moments and we, and I said that Jackie's, that the delivery has arrived at the right time. It's past, it's charcoal next Thursday. No, and I said you wouldn't. Oh, but pastel pencils have got the same squeak. We've had a few squeaks where we've had to go over several layers. It's actually charcoals a really weird thing. I, I was going to say while I'm waiting for this green to dry, but it's pastel. It is dry, but um, charcoal you draw with charcoal, but you paint with pastel. But what's interesting with charcoal is it sits on the surface. So with a putty rubber, you can lift it straight off. And it makes it less like yeah, you know the powder. Yes, it it, it can do, um, but it. it it works in a different way to graphite you know where graphite is very shiny charcoal is very matte um graphite can be hard to rub out um, a figure and face it's like the the, the the head and shoulders to waist of a woman i think Let's see if i can find the photo so you can have a look are you are you, are you asking <laughs> Can we wait till it warms up before I shed off my apron? <laughs> no, well, we do get asked if we do um, life drawing, but it's such a small room here. Yeah. And generally you work on an easel. Um, and, and life models are very expensive. £25 an hour if you want to get some extra cash. Become a life model. Yeah, well, do you know, it, it's funny. Oh, that's what that's that's what we're doing next week. Oh, my God. Have a look. I think I've got a headache. <laughs> um, it, interesting that you'd think younger, firm, attractive flesh is nice to look at, but really boring to do. Yeah. And actually quite hard, whereas you've got, like, bumpy flesh... Um, chunky flesh, wrinkly fresh flesh. It's really nice to draw and paint because it's got more character to it. But but young flesh. Yes. Yes, you do. You want a lived-in face because it's more characterful. Whereas actually really smooth perfect young skin is so hard to do because it never looks finished because there's nothing meaty to it you know yeah. um in painting it's different i suppose but then if you look at botticelli he, he preferred curvier women didn't they all the women in the renaissance rubens. were yeah rubens they were all chunkier well i do you know what they're not chunkier women they're they were normal the they were normal women not, yeah yeah. I always think that I was born out of my time. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that, I've seen there's that social media meme, isn't it? And it says, I now understand why all the women in the Renaissance uh, are, are braless and chunky, having come survived a plague. 
now we've just gone through two years of COVID, I feel exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Oh, right. So, I'm just bracing myself, and I'm also trying to find... I don't necessarily want to use black for the shadow, but I no. think purple's wrong. There is a very deep blue black. I've only got a little bit of it here. And I think that might work. I use it a lot, as you can see. Yeah, I think that one's going to be a midnight blue. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. So you might want to do the um, the building one first. Will this dark blue pencil work? Oh, it might work just to do the the shadow of this building because the doorways and everything are all short, aren't they? Just so I can do these fiddly bits. And remember, the further away from the light, the more angled they will become. Remember how we, we did that little section with my little bits of putty eraser? Mm -hmm. So the light from the, each window or door will change and they'll get more severe in the angle. In fact, that's interesting. If you look at the tower shadow, you know, the turrety bit. Yeah. That's actually going off in that direction. Yeah. We do. I don't think we look enough, do we, really? No. We just presume a lot. Yeah, actually, most of our presumptions are inaccurate. might have to skim a little bit of black because I need a blue black and that isn't really a blue black so let's put a bit of black on there it's Thursday isn't it today yeah. Thursday And it'll be our last pastel class of January. Yeah. That's gone quick, hasn't it? Right, let's try this tree. <laughs> no, exactly. So it's longer down here, isn't it? And then it kind of... It doesn't have to look like this tree, so that's what's the best about it. You can really play around with 
shadows. Move these blinking pencils out of the way again. Oh, it's on my up my nose. I am. Every time I move, there's a pastel pencil f jumping out across my paper. Do, 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 do. Mm, ish, very ish, V. I don't. I'm not that worried about it, to be honest. As long as it could look like a tree. Straight, slightly little on my tree. It's a slight little kink towards the right. Smudge all of this in as well. Oh, is that a bird that jumped up there again? So, hopefully, you think I made the right choice after my deliberation on the colour of the paper this morning. Because mm -hmm. I think it would have been trickier if it was a different colour. We did a gouache class on Thursday. It's a very dark blue, like a midnight blue, Kate. Sorry. Um, if I've I'm a bit slow. I didn't see that come up. We used a burgundy colour for our painting on Thursday mo yesterday morning. Um, it was a very green landscape, so we used a complementary opposite. But it's just cartridge paper next week. And and what using the complementary opposite did is it made the green a lot more vibrant. Because you can't get rid of it all, so it's you just get bits of it showing through, you know. I have to try and think that my tree is a slightly different shape to the tree in the picture. So if I've got different branches, I've got to put those in. It is, and it's difficult with something like this because there, there is a lot of pastel and a lot of tree. And also with shadows, it probably didn't show up when I was showing you with my little broken bits of putty eraser. But shadows actually get wider the further away they are from the object. Which is funny really, because you wouldn't think that. Yes. Yeah, well, there is. you don't want to cover all of that bright green up, do you? Because otherwise that defeats the object of putting it down in the first place. So I use me cotton bud. Did you see you did a nice sea shadow colour for the cafe there? Well, that's not a bad thing, though, is it? I mean, there are times when you need delicacy. Do you like vibrant? You like pastel soft colours, though, don't you? Anyway, you don't. You don't like really in your face stuff, do you? It's funny. I had I, back in the West Midlands. I taught a, a lady. She used to come to my acrylic and watercolour classes, and um, 
in acrylics, she'd make the most soft pastel paintings ever, which is really hard to do in acrylics. But then in the watercolours, they were like really vibrant and in your face. <laughs> I used to say, I, I don't know how you manage it. I, did, I used to call her the pastel queen because they were so soft, her acrylic paintings. No matter how she tried, it was always really, really ethereal. Let me just give this a bit of a... So it's kind of given us that option, hasn't it? I haven't gone that dark. But I think the darker blue would look looks better than the black, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it makes it feel a little bit more natural, perhaps. So yeah, figure next week. I'll just let you know what's coming up for the rest of this week and next. This afternoon is watercolours and we're doing a scene of the Wallace Monument in uh, Stirling. And it's all lovely purple colours. Uh, tomorrow morning is Art History and we're doing Da Vinci, Michelangelo and Anguizola. Friday afternoon is watercolours and it's a fly agaric toadstool uh, with a forest behind. Saturday morning is our free class live from the shop's Facebook page, 11 till 12.30, and we're doing a watercolour class of a snowy cottage in Ireland. Mm. Monday morning, live from Wardington, is a barn owl in gouache on grey cart. Monday evening's watercolour class is a distant deer in an eerie woodland. Lots of cold blues and greys in that one. Tuesday afternoon's acrylic class is a mossy bridge over a flowing river. Wednesday morning's gouache class is a posing badger. And Wednesday afternoon's drawing class is a woman in yellow walking through a desolate field. And next Thursday morning is a portrait slash figure study in charcoal. I don't do many charcoals on these pastel classes, but I will throw a few more in. There's some I haven't said that it's charcoal, but I will um, maybe, yeah, I'll maybe throw a few extra charcoal ones in every now and again. And then those that have been advertised. If it's a really pretty colourful picture I will more likely use pastels if it's less about the colour and more about the tone I might use charcoal have you enjoyed that V? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. see it's not as complicated as it looks when you break it down is it you know when you do it step by step I think the castle um, what was it crenellations yeah. It's tricky because I'm looking at mine and <laughs> you see I'm thinking my castle could do with being darker but it's too late now really because if I made it darker it would make the glowy bits glow more but um, it's funny not to do anything apart from that white on the sky wouldn't it yeah yeah but can you imagine how hard the tree would have been if we'd got yeah. layers of yeah. pastel on there um, but it works, doesn't it? Just adding yeah. that little bit of white. If we got a sunset or something, then we'd have to put more layers on. But um, I think that's nice. Are you happy with yours, um, Kath? Um, well, I'm not sure about the other one. Yeah. That's lovely. Well, that, that's it looks like the picture, doesn't it? Looks it? Really good in the I mean, the, I've done the yes think. well but they are quite random in the in the picture aren't they i mean the, the difference is i suppose there's we've simplified the grass a lot more there's quite a bit of texture in the in the yeah. in the grass which i don't know if yeah like with, with the dark green pastel pencil you see you could do a few little little dots and dashes across your grass the lighter green grass in places just so it feels like it's got texture to it there's little little lines you probably can't even see it on yeah try and make it look grassy but i just thought it was an interesting subject i'm absolutely filthy that 
Yeah, you see, you this morning posted, are you having a laugh? No, I wasn't having a laugh. And I said you'd be fine. But everything's a challenge when you don't know what you're doing, isn't it? Uh, and, and my job is supposed to be to help you know what you're doing. build your confidence so you can feel like you might want to do this maybe not this again but if you did see something similar you wouldn't be as scared would you You'd think oh i did one of these before oh but when you take a photograph of it it will change um because it will lighten your lights and darken your darks you know so it it, it won't be as it won't look like it looks like like i'm on in real life, my glow in my sky doesn't look anything like it does on the camera. The camera's enhanced it quite a lot. It's very short grass, isn't it? It's well maintained for a ruin. It must be a popular spot. Maybe it's up... What's that abbey up north? Whitby Abbey or Fountains Abbey or something. There are. It was, I think it was Whitby Abbey I was thinking. <laughs> Jackie's just a clever clogs. <laughs> you are a clever clogs. Did I beat you in Wordle this morning? No, what is Wordle? What? I was the Pacey version. Yesterday, I got Trouble Lord. Once a day, I had a new word day. Just one word per day, but you had to guess that. Five letters a day, and you had to guess the letter from the word. So you put the A word, the five letter word, at the same end. If you put the right letter in the wrong place, you had the right letter in the right place. And then you just guess until you get the word. But from a program on the spelling. Been a, the way someone was explaining it to us yesterday, there's been a program on in the afternoon where lingo, that's the one. It is like lingo. It's like lingo. Yeah, I can show you. There's an app about Word. That there's a free app called Wordus, and and that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. And then you just type in a five-letter word. So let's type in noise, and go for it. Right. So it hasn't got n. I, S or E, but it's got O and the O is in the right place. So you then have to think of another five letter word that hasn't got those letters in, but has got the O there. So I'm, I'll just write topic. So this is an app. So I'll write topic, which I know it hasn't got some of those letters in, but right. So it starts with T and O and then it's got a C in it, but not there. So it goes green where you've got the letter in the right, right place, right. orange if it's there in the word somewhere. Uh, touch. Oh, right. Jackie's so good at this. T O U C H. Oh, right. Torch. <laughs> there we go. Hooray. Like it is like lingo. But there is an app called Word Us. Oh, right. And, um, and you can do as many of that as you want. Yeah. You can only do one a day, but on Word Us you can do as many as you want. So if you want to build up, no, I, I look forward to seeing what everybody else has done. I, I will, of course, take a photograph of this and post it underneath the reference image. Um, it wasn't as as challenging as you maybe first thought. Um, next week's will probably be a bit more challenging because we'll look at um, face proportions and all of that, and we'll be talking about charcoal as well but we've learned a little bit about shadows and light haven't we so that was good yeah. um so it's been a very beneficial have you what you'll never do it again <laughs> no because it's live you're live on facebook do not swear well 
I think as long as it's not a really naughty, naughty word, Facebook allows it. Because I haven't got a beeper button because there's no delay, you see. It goes out live, live. But I think that was quite nice. It was interesting. And, and using the, uh, the, the blue paper. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was beautiful. Oh, yeah. That. But it's nice to do different subjects, isn't it? Because then you know. You, well, this is it. If I always say, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. That's the old. That, yeah, and you know what? That tree and that glow is really lovely. Oh, Marie's posted hers already. I'll have to have My fingers are too filthy to look on my phone. Marie, that's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. Um, have a really good week and a good weekend and a good start to February. Because um, I won't see you and uh, if you're not doing any other classes until then. Um, so take care, stay safe, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.